Good morning, church. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. (coughs) Announcements this morning. Uh, The Morency Senior Center, as well as Hudson or Addison, too, are also in need of volunteer drivers. So so if that's something you are interested in, um, you get reimbursed uh, mileage. And uh, so that would be... It's a fun thing to do as well as um, important for getting those meals on wheels out to folks. And 19 days left of Lent, and I hope you're collecting your uh, interesting things uh, that you don't use anymore. We'd be happy to share with the Methodist women as they um, plan for a rummage sale in May. And so, save bags for the, uh, so that we can give good things away. Okay. And he, let's see, deadline for newsletter is today, so please get those in. We'll get those printed out this week and for next week. And along uh, with the newsletter, <clears throat> it's time to sign up for special music again. Uh-huh. Um, So, go. if you're interested, please see me after the service. You bet. Very good. Um, we also have a Lenten service this uh, Wednesday at 7 o'clock here. Uh, the service will be 7 to 8, and then refreshments downstairs, um, thanks to Methodist Women. And right. Esther, leave me that off. Yes. Very yeah. good. Do you, do, you need, do you need anything? I, I think we have the volunteers already. Okay. Alrighty, very good. Um, let's see, and don't forget, uh, Deb would be love to hear from you about Ernie Haas and the signature sound. Well, I was going to say, I think I've only heard from um, four people, and we really need more than that to get the group right. So mm-hmm. I think we'll just leave it as everybody can if they want to go in a group okay. and, and okay. get their own tickets. And, okay. Um, we'll just leave it at that. Okay. So if you, it's still something that if you'd like to do, that's May May 8th, which is Mother's Day. And um, so <coughs> plan on that if that's something you'd like to do. Very good. Okay. Thank you. Any other announcement that we need? Oh, I know. Flowers for Clayton. We're going to... we get our flower fund going for um, to decorate for Easter. So please fill out your either in memory of or in honor of, and um, $10 will get help towards decorating the church. Thank you. And if you're not aware of it, those need to go into the offering plates. Yep. Please. Put your check, put your on the memo line uh, for... Flowers, flower fun. Or your cash. Or cash. cash. We have, we take cash. That's <laughs> just fold it up with your, uh, your with your lavender um, bulletin insert. Also, we're still collecting for uh, Umcor for Ukraine, and anything that goes um, now will be going directly. One hundred percent goes to Ukraine relief. Um, next Sunday, we will do an Umcor. It used to be called One Great Hour of Sharing. Now it's called UMCOR Sunday. And that goes to the um, administration so that 100% of like today's uh, offering will go to directly to U- Ukraine. So um, that, that because we do one Sunday a year specifically for the administration, that allows everything else to go for 100% to the the uh, cause that we are giving money to. So, any other announcements we need to make? And please we greet each other with a wave, knowing that God loves each and every one of you. <clears throat> Let us pray. Everyone who thirsts comes to the waters. 
You who have no money, come, buy my wine and milk and without money, without price. Come, weary and worn, and God will fill your soul. For God brings blessings even in the midst of pain. So let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Amen. Please join me in the call to worship found in your bulletin. O oh God, my God, we seek you. Our spirits long for you. But your love, O oh God, is better even than life. Our words will praise you. Our actions bless you. Let us seek the Lord where God may be found. We will bless you as long as we live. Our opening hymn is number 420, Breathe On Me, Breath of God, verses 1, 2, and 3. share our joys and concerns this morning. Where have you seen God work in your life this week? Today is the first day of spring. So flowers are coming. <laughs> That's exciting. So I think at uh, I think Bill said it was 11:33. We can stand up and cheer that uh, spring has come. <laughs> so uh, we give thanks for spring. Lord, in your mercy. <laughs> Any other concerns or? Yes, Deb. We lift up Amanda and the whole family for their loss. Lord, in your mercy. Thank you. Someone's having a, a, birth, a wedding anniversary coming up here. I think we need to sing, even though only half the couple is here. <laughs> Shall we sing happy anniversary to Kim? Sure. Anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary, Kim and Donna. Happy anniversary to you. How many years, Kim? 33. 30? <laughs> Congratulations. And, yes, you're blamed. Oh, our Um, went to Calvin's 
Adam. Uh, that night she got a call from the doctor, says you're not waiting two weeks to have a hysterectomy and you're doing it. I think like I said last week. Uh, it's supposed to have done on Monday. At that point in time, they cut the wedding down to about a quarter of the size of what it was supposed to originally be. We didn't know, sure, if we were still invited until Sunday. As of right now, we're still invited. However, that's still all up in the air. Tuesday, they can run through another pap test or some some test. Pap, pap, pap. Pat. Yeah. Uh, she's got cancer in the liver. She's got an esophagus. Uh, the uterus is their least of their worries. So no hysterectomy. Now they're doing chemo, and that's why everything's up in the air. Um, she's got five days of chemo this week. As of right now, the wedding is on Saturday. of us or just immediate family or, or not maybe not sad. even maybe not even a wedding at this time. So they got they're never a good time to get cancer, but you know they've been planning on having this for wedding for a while and uh, poor timing all the way around for the whole time. But they just need a lot of support and it's uh, it's a challenge. Well you bet it absolutely is. Well we lift we lift her up and and the whole family as they're dealing with the, the cancer. Lord, in your mercy. Thank you. We want to celebrate Bill. Uh, he can see out of one eye now. <laughs> Isn't there a joke about one eye Bill or something? Uh, no doubt. <laughs> well, we, we lift Bill up for his second uh, cataract surgery. Lord, in your mercy. Then, and the others. And especially, let's lift up those uh, from Ukraine who are, have fleed their homes, those who are still stuck in Ukraine. And, um, and we also need to pray for those folks in Russia who have no clue as to what's going on. So we lift them all up. Lord, in your mercy. Let us lift up to God those things that are deep in our hearts in silent prayer. O Holy One, when we are alone in the desert, wandering through the wilderness, we call to you, for you are our help. Our souls cling to you, so come, God, and hold us up. Come, bring your presence and fill us with your peace. God of mercy, we long to come when you call, yet often do not. When we are most alone, we fail to turn to you. When we are most afraid, we do not always think we can turn to you. When we are lost and hurting and in pain, we fail to realize how much we suffer. We refuse to ask for help. We lash out at others. We numb our hearts. We hide. Forgive us. But you, O oh God, are faithful. You see us and know us and love us as we are. In times of trial, you show us the way through. So receive us once more and have mercy on us and help us to begin again. So in the shadow of your wings, we will sing for joy as we pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. As we consider our offering, so God of grace, you have fed our spirits and nourished our souls. You have supported us in every possible way. May the gifts that we bring this morning be an offering of our gratitude. And may we be a promise that to share what we have received from your hand as we stand and sing our doxology. Praise God from the
patient and merciful God, we bring our offerings humbly on this day, hoping that they will bring fruit to the ministry of your church on earth. We ourselves have not always set our priorities on bearing good fruit, and yet you are a patient gardener. You have sent saints into our midst to make the soil richer, yet like the stubborn fig tree, good fruit has been scarce. May our journey this Lenten season feed our spirits to bring forth the fruit that you desire. We pray in the name of our Savior and Redeemer, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Let's remain standing and turn to number 383. This is the day of new beginnings, verses 1, 2, and 3. Scripture this reading this morning is Luke 13, 1 through 9. At that very time, there were some present who told him about the Galileans, whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. And he asked them, Do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way that they were worse sinners than all the other Galileans? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those 18 who were killed in, when the tower of Siloam fell, do you think that they, that they were worse offenders than the others living in Jerusalem? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish just as they did. And then he told them this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, see here, for three years I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree, and still I find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? And he replied, sir, let it alone for one more year until I dig around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good, but if not, you can cut it down. The word of God for the people of God. Pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So over lunch, Martha confessed to her best friend, Anna, that she was thinking of having Botox injections to look younger. Oh, Martha, don't do it. I tried it, it really is the worst thing you could do. But Anna, you look so happy. <clears throat> exactly. I'm frowning with all my might as, at you right now. <laughs> so a teenage boy entered the candy shop and ordered three boxes of chocolates, a small box, a medium size and a large size. The candy owner shop was curious and asked the youth, why three different sizes? Well, responded the lad, I've got a hot date with a new girl tonight. I plan to give her a box of chocolates depending on how friendly she is with me. If she's merely nice, I'll give her a small box. If she lets me hold her hand, I'll give her the medium box. And 
However, if she lets me kiss her, I'll give her this large box. So that night, the youth had dinner at his new girlfriend's home with her family, and as he sat nervously at the dinner table, the girl's father asked his house guest if he would be willing to offer the prayer before the meal. Well, the lad offered a long and fervent prayer. He confessed his wicked thoughts and asked God for undeserved mercy. He pledged a change of heart and promised to walk the path of righteousness. After dinner, the young couple sat on the swing on the front porch and the girl shared her amazement that the, with the boy's prayer. I had no idea, Johnny, that you were so spiritual. Yeah, said the boy, and I didn't know your father owned the candy shop. <laughs> An unexpected turn of events has the power to shake our preoccupation with the trivial. Traumas can be fertile moments of spiritual growth and resolve. Now, while Jesus was teaching in Jerusalem, two local tragedies took place that, that shook people's theological beliefs to the core. The first incident happened at the temple. Several Jewish worshipers were offering their animal sacrifices at the temple when the Roman governor, Pilate, had them murdered as a show of Roman authority. The blood of the victims was mixed with the blood of their animal sacrifice. It was clear to everyone that the victims were completely innocent of any wrongdoing. It could have happened to anyone who might have been worshiping at the temple that day. And the second recent tragedy in the news at that time concerned the unexpected collapse of a stone tower that killed 18 bystanders. Now, they could have been anyone who just happened to be in the market square that day. Jesus is knows his audience's tendency to apply cause and effect, thinking to every event. If something went bad and it happens to someone that they, they must have done something wrong, or maybe they were bad people and they deserved their fate, the thinking goes, if someone gets a terrible disease, it must have been because they didn't take proper care of themselves. Or if a person becomes rich, it must mean that they're very smart or clever or exceptionally good. However, Jesus asked his congregation to consider more deeply. Were the murder Galileans worse sinners than other worshipers at the temple that day? Were the people killed by the falling tower worse offenders than all the others visiting the square that morning? Of course not. But that doesn't stop us from trying to make logical sense out of such senseless acts. We desperately want to explain things that only God can know. We like to imagine that we have control in preventing such tragedies from happening to us. In her book, Aftershock, Nancy Schutte recalls her battle with cancer. And she tells about some of the really annoying things that well-intended people say to the sick, such as, it must be God's will for you, or everything is going to work out fine, or you must have done something really bad to deserve this. But Jesus addressed the crowd saying, were those who died any worse sinners than you? Jesus' question assumes the popular notion that sin is the cause of calamity and that God uses such tragedies to teach us a lesson. But Jesus says, no, those people didn't die because they did something wrong. Jesus shatters any illusion that we can protect ourselves from bad things happening to good people. However, Jesus does powerfully point his hearers toward the source of our peace and ultimate security, saying, unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. God is the only true source of peace and security. Every day is an opportunity to see life as a gift, and an opportunity to live with eternal purpose 
and fruitfulness. The frightful and uncertain events of life can refocus us upon what is the eternal worth. Our vulnerabilities lead us to repent, repentance and redirection. Hence, Jesus offers his listeners the parable of the fig tree. A landowner possessed the fig tree that did not produce fruit for three years. The landowner tells the gardener, cut it down. Thankfully, Jesus didn't end the story there. Surely we all need to hear the call to repent, but we also need to hear the good news of God's grace. The gracious gardener intercedes on behalf of the fig tree. Sir, says the gardener, let it alone for one more year until I dig it around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. The gardener pleads for grace and more time to nurture the fig tree so that it might bear fruit. Jesus is like the gardener in this parallel, parable. He offers the gift of time and nurture to his listeners. And unlike the disaster victims who they have been gifted with the grace to repent and to bear fruit, Jesus is the gardener who still has hope for you and I. We have been given the gift of time and nurture from a loving God. Jesus refuses to give up on us or on his church. Christ is great expectations for you. There is hope for a fruitful life in you. There is good news even in the midst of terrible events of our time parable of the fig tree offers a blessed assurance that God's aim is for us to live fruitful lives in God's kingdom. God is at work to cultivate and fertilize with the expectation of producing fruitfulness and faithful believers. This is good news even in the midst of the terrible events. The parable of the fig tree offers us a blessed assurance that God's aim is for us to live into God's kingdom with fruitful lives. He's at work with to cultivate and fertilize. We are yet alive and by the grace of God will be fruitful trees of life. The Apostle Paul wrote in his letter to the Ephesians, for it is by God's grace that you have been saved through faith. It is not the result of your own efforts, but God's gift, so that no one can boast of it. God has made us what we are, and in our union with Christ Jesus, he has created us for a life of good deeds, which he's already prepared for us to do. On Ash Wednesday, we began 40 days of Lent by marking our foreheads with ashes as a reminder that we will all die, dust to dust, ashes to ashes. Therefore, we must not procrastinate about living a purposeful and fruitful life as part of God's kingdom. We were created for a life of good deeds. God is preparing us for a fruitful life. Our vulnerability in this dangerous world leads us to place our hope and faith in God's plan for us, to know that we live and die with such blessed assurance of God's love. Jesus, like the patient gardener, offers each of us the gift of time and grace. Let us pray. O patient Savior, we picture you as the patient gardener. We see you working to loosen the soil and the that has impacted the roots of the fig tree. We imagine you watering and adding nutrients to the soil. And we thank you for your patient care of us. We repent of our slowness to bear fruit. Come dig around our roots and nourish our hearts that we might bear fruit in your kingdom this year. Amen. Let us stand and sing number 707, Hymn of Promise. Seed an apple tree in the cocoon. 
something God alone can see. There's a song in every silence, singing word and melody. There's a God in every darkness, bringing hope to you and me. From the past, from the future, while it holds the mystery.